Hello everybody, welcome to the Comic Game Movie Show. My name is Deshaun and today I'm here to give you my review of... What's it? No Time to Die. The latest in the 007 um, franchise. The last 007, the movie of the Daniel Craig um, 007 franchise. No Time to Die. Now this movie has been anticipated because in Hollywood... Very so often, you get someone playing a character long enough that it becomes iconic. In my personal opinion, I do believe, and I know some people have their own versions. You know, some people like, um, obviously, Sean Connery. Um, do oh, I always forget his name. Pierce Brosden. I saw Pierce Brosden when I was, like, really, really young. Um, there are other ones that people like. But for me, I would probably say... I never watched the old ones. I didn't grow up with that. I didn't grow up watching the old ones, so I don't know. I would say, to me, Daniel Craig is my James Bond. He's my James Bond. He's the one I've seen the most. He's, I believe he's been in the most movies. He's been James Bond longer than anyone else has been James Bond. And I've grown accustomed to him being James Bond. Like, He's in my mind now as James Bond. Like, it's like, you know, don't get me wrong. I do think about those older Bonds, but his Bond is what I think about now. And um, I, I did an um, action, you know, classic review of Skyfall. But, man, of, like, Skyfall. Either it was Skyfall or Casino Royale. But, you know, so, like, this is a big deal. This is a very, this is the retirement. Not the retirement of a character. They will recast James Bond and have more James Bond. But the passing of a new James, of a, of like of the old generation's James Bond, like for a lot of people, like I said, my age, he's been James Bond since two thousand and six. That's a long fucking time, man. He's been James Bond for over a decade, like you know, for over twelve years, man. Like he's been Bond for a very long time. I hope I'm doing that math right. He's been Bond for over twelve years, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but he's been Bond for a very long time, longer than anyone else has been Bond. Now, if you know, Daniel Craig has had his ups and downs with the James Bond franchise. You know, like, he's he's outright, he's been anywhere from he's done to um, I'm tired of this to I'm over this to uh, he's been all over the place with this franchise. But on this one, he was here, he was in it to win it. He was here, he was present, we didn't hear any of those things, he was happy, it was almost like he wanted, it's almost like it was in his contract to do this mini, but he wanted to turn, he wanted to be finished, he wanted to turn the page, but they wouldn't let him turn the page, and now that he finally knows this is him turning the page on the character, he's ready to let go, so he gave this everything, because he was fantastic in this. I usually like Daniel Craig in, in most of the James Bond movies. Um, I never really felt like he was phoning it in. Like, I know some people say they felt like in um, Spectre and other movies he was phoning it in. I don't think Spectre particularly worked, but I don't think that was... I don't think Spectre is, like, the best. I don't think it's that, that bad. But I don't think he's the problem with that movie. There are many problems with that movie, but he's not... I don't believe he is one of them. Same thing with um, Quantum of Solace. Like... I don't believe he's the problem with Quantum of Solace. I still enjoyed Quantum of Solace. It's just, you know, I don't think he was the problem with him. But Daniel Craig in this movie is as good as he is. He he returns to the Skyfall slash Casino Royale levels. Because in my personal opinion, those are my three favorite James Bond films ever. It's Skyfall and Casino Royale. And this one... No Time to Die is in that same conversation. I don't know if it's better than those movies. I can't really tell you that. The villain is not the best, but I don't particularly think any of the James Bond villains have been like the most crazy. You know, they've kind of been, they've kind of either been super cheesy and eh, or interesting. But like, there's not much to them, you know, other than what they're doing. You know, even Javier, um, Javier Bardem in, um, what was it, in Skyfall, while interesting and fun, was still just, you know what I mean. So, um, and R Rami, Remy or Rami, Rami Malek, whatever, in this, he was, you know, he, he chewed a lot of scenery, he had a weird, creepy little presence and voice, he had the nice little burn mark things going, but, you know, I mean, he didn't make me 
dislike the movie, but he wasn't adding anything to the movie for me. He really wasn't. Like, it probably would have been better if, um, because the movie ended up, because the trailer stuff made me think it was going to be something different that it didn't end up being. Um, I'm probably going to have to spoil this. This is going to probably have to be a spoiler review to really get into it, because other than some of the things that you can spoil, the movie is what you imagine a good James Bond movie would be. It has great action set pieces. It has great, um, you know, great cinematography, the music is obviously great, um, I do, I, I'm one of the people who do dig the big, Billy English, is her name Billy English or English, I don't even know how to say her last name, her No Time to Die song in the intro, um, I dig that song, um, like I say, everyone's back here to play, everyone does a great job, but the biggest things in this movie are the deaths, because not only does James Bond die, yes, he dies in this movie, yeah, at the end of the movie, he dies. Like, just flat out. Like, there ain't no coming back. Like, they make sure you see that shit. And it's like, no, he is super dead. Um, and then he dies at the end. And it made sense. I saw it coming because I know Daniel Craig never wants to come back. And, like, at the moment, it just feels like he never wants to come back. Sure, maybe 20 years from now, if they want to go... 20 years from now, if they want to do some, like, call, like some something cool and be like... You know, especially if the new James Bond doesn't work out, the next one doesn't work out. Maybe 20 years from now they want to come back and they'll talk Daniel Craig into coming back and doing something and being like, he actually survived. And now it's like his daughter finds him and like his like his daughter goes on to be a Bond because those there's a lot of reveals in the movie. First of all, he has a daughter. Secondly, um, his friend dies. Um, I always forget his name. It's like um, Jeffrey... Lander or something, the the, the, the CIA um, agent played by Jeffrey Wright, that guy, he's been in all the movies, he's always, he's pretty much been his best friend, he's pretty much been the only friend he's had, and he's like, you know, he's a part of the CIA, the American, you know, Secret Service, so it's kind of funny that, you know, it's like, but they became friends, because they both know the line, they both know when the line should be crossed, and they both know that both of their governments are sketchy, but they're doing the best for their countries, and they bonded over that, and you know, it was fun seeing them interact, because it was just like, he He's the only person who can talk to James like that, and it was just fun seeing that. So when he he dies in the movie, and it was really sad how the way he died, you know, and it was really sad and it clearly affected James. Um, some things that were misleading from the trailer, I thought the way Rami Malek's character was talking, I thought he was going to be a former double O. Now they've already done that sort of with um, that Javier Bardem's character from um, Skyfall. They kind of did the whole oh he's a former double O. That never gets tiresome to me. Charlie's, um, just, just to go off on a side note, Charlie's Angels Full Throttle is awful. It's not a good movie. Not even, it's not, it's not, it's nowhere near as good as the first Charlie's Angels with, um, you know, you know, see, like, you know, with Lucy Liu and them. But I always loved the idea, but one thing that was in the movie that I did enjoy, that I loved, at least the concept, is the idea of a dark angel, of a an evil version, an evil, like, like the dark side, the flip of the coin of that. And they did, like I said, they did do that in Skyfall. But I thought they were going to do this here. I thought they could have, for this to be James Bond's final movie, they probably should have made the villain more personable. Honestly, they probably should have went with the classic, he's literally, like, Bond actually created this dude. Like, like, because, like, they really beat you over the head with, like, and they really do a good job of setting this up. Like, now this movie, it does do a good job at really letting you sit and appreciate, um, the other movies. Appreciate how good this man is, because this man's a legend. People know his name, like... He's like a legend in like the military and secret service. You know, he's he's well known. People know his name. People know his reputation. You know, you really feel like he's lived. And I love it when they do this kind of stuff in um long running franchises or TV shows. When there's a singular character, after a while, that character is just well known for being a bad motherfucker. And he is. He's respected. And they don't do anything to like. Now they do kind of make fun of it a bit because he's older now, and you know, so they kind of they make fun of it a bit. And there's um. There's a couple other tidbits, especially coming from his replacement 007. She um, played by Lashana Lynch, and she's she's great in this too. She's fun in this, um, but but they they do play with him being older. They make fun of him. They kind of go, ah, uh, you know, they kind of they kind of have fun with that. But at the same time, it's like I do love the respect that he gets. And when you get to that level of like accomplishments that he has, it's just like, you know, and like this James Bond has always been a bit sadder. And it never really dawned on me until like it's dawned on me watching the other movies, but it really dawned on me watching this one. Just how like this Bond has always been like 
This is a Bond who, and this is the one, and this is what I love about this Bond. It's why he's my favorite James Bond. He's my favorite Bond because killing people affects him. That's a novel concept. It's a novel concept in action movies in general. But you really get the feeling that killing people, all the death, weighs on him. There's just this look in Daniel Craig's face and the way he, his demeanor is that it all weighs on him, that it's constantly weighing on him, that essentially he accepted, like, it's not like he's cold-blooded and he doesn't feel anything. No, he feels it all. He's just such a fucking strong individual and just such a strong man and just such a, you know, just, you know, just, that, he's, he's that dude that he's like, I can just carry all that weight. And he just, he always has this look on his face like he's carrying weight. <laughs> he's carrying so much baggage. Like, being James Bond, he made, like, Daniel Craig's the only one who's, only James Bond who made being James Bond seem like a difficult job. Like, it's not easy. It's not, like, yeah, sure, I sleep with these girls. Like, awesome. Every time I fall in love, someone dies. Or, in this case of this movie, like I said, I believe they kind of tricked me. You think that the girl he loves betrayed him. But as it turns out, she didn't. I thought that was a little, uh, I, I thought, I, I was not cool with that either. Because I, I think it would have been more interesting if she had betrayed him for a good reason and then he won her over. But they didn't go that route. She honestly didn't betray him and had no idea what the fuck was happening. And legit, did, like, legit, legit didn't know what was going on. So, like, it just made it like, oh. Okay, and and like I said, the whole thing with his daughter, the daughter thing just kind of comes out of nowhere. It's not set up. It's not like early in the movie she took a pregnancy test, and we didn't we didn't actually, and it's not like and we didn't actually get to see it because stuff happened. And then later there's a girl there. No, there's no sign that she's pregnant. There's no like there's no we don't even like she's just pregnant. You no, know, she just has a kid, a five year old. Just like okay, but and it kind of just came out of nowhere. It's just like oh, okay. <laughs> And, and then I know it was kind of setting up he's going to die right then and there because it was like, oh, he can't have all this. He, he, you, can't, you don't get to have all this, James. But, but yeah, like, like I said, there are things about this movie that um, I enjoyed. And think there are a lot, mostly, I mostly enjoyed this movie um, for the most part. I thought Daniel Craig and the cast were great. The interplay between him and his replacement 007 was, was fun. I'm kind of sad that the franchise is ending because I would kind of want to see more stuff with them. The way it felt... It did, like, like parts of it, it was weird, because parts of it felt like a finale, and parts of it felt like, um, well, what's next? <laughs> like, like you know, like, I was waiting for him to survive so they could just come back to it. Like, it doesn't even always, it doesn't even completely feel like the end. But overall, I had a good time with this movie. Um, I don't think, I think the villain is a bit flat. I don't think he ruins the movie, but he's a bit flat. I think there were some decisions made to just simplify the story, and it kind of took some of the emotional impact off. I will tell you one thing, though. I didn't think that that his death at the end would affect me, but when I saw him die at the end, knowing what I know, knowing that he isn't coming back, I will admit, it was a slither. It was like, sort of, almost, not like, almost like when Hugh Jackman died in Logan. Because there was just a bit of me that's like, I've spent, you know, I've watched this same guy play this character for, what, like, but like five movies, six movies, something like that? So, like, you know, when you, like, it's kind of dawning on me, you know? It's kind of like, damn, man, I've watched this guy for this long play this character I've enjoyed. So, this is just good. This is just cool. I, like, so I play this character that I've enjoyed, breathe a lot, new life into this character, and now it's over. And it's, it did kind of make me a bit sad. It did. It did. I'm like, whatever the new James Bond does, um, I will all be curious to see. But I will say, they have a hard act to follow with Daniel Craig. That man, he did a great job with this role. He did a great job in his last movie in this role. I give No Time to Die an 8.5. I had a blast watching it. I had a fun time. It has problems. I don't love the villain. I think they could have took some more dramatic approaches than they, should, than they, than they did. Certain things. There's a, hey, there's a MacGuffin in this movie that's actually a really good one. Like, it's a crazy one. I was like, wow, that's a crazy piece of technology. Shortly, I'm just, you know, say this real quick. It's a, basically a virus that is DNA targeted. So you can get someone's DNA, put it inside this virus, and it will, and if it goes into somebody who doesn't have, and, it, and, so, and, and it's pretty much will go into everyone, anybody's body. But unless you're the person with the right DNA, it, it's harmless to you. But when you touch people, it passes on to them. So essentially, you can just drop this shit 
You could be like, all right, get such and such's hair, like one dude's hair, like Smith's hair, put it in this virus, drop the virus on some dude who just happens to be living next door to Smith, and everything this motherfucker touches, it, and it's like, it's impossible to escape it. It's like this crazy, like, like I said, it was created, it's like, it was created to prevent collateral damage because it's a targeted, little, literal targeted thing that can't harm anyone. It was a crazy device, and I was like, that's fucking cool. But other than that, that's my opinion on No Time to Die. Have you seen it? You should. You should. It's a really fun action movie. Bit long, bit long, but I was entertained way through. I felt my ass hurting a bit because it was that long, but I still liked it. Anyways, thank you guys for joining the Game Move Show. Please be like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.